Hi everyone, welcome to the Being Human podcast. Scott St. Marie here. Thanks for watching on YouTube as well. You've come here for an answer, my friends, haven't you? You've come here to know. You've come here to know more. Scott, how do I deal with fear? I fear other people. I fear groups and crowds. I, I fear, you know, what other people will think of me. I fear going to that Starbucks and that chick looks at me in the eyes and I can't deal with it. Scott, I fear change. I fear travel, going to new places. Scott, you know what? I'm fearing going places without a mask. You know, I, I fear COVID. I fear getting sick. You know, Scott, I've had trouble driving. I, I got in a car accident years ago and I'm still not the same. I fear driving. Whatever the fear, the fear of failure, Scott, I fear that if I miss this exam, this test, then my life is going to be ruined. Scott, I fear that if I get in the relationship and she turns out to be a big buddy, then I, I can't live with myself. I can't. So the fear is crippling in our lives, right? It is. It stops us from doing things. Stops us from reaching our full potential, whatever the beep that means. It 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 stops us from being this is the this is what I always used to say. I can't say it anymore. The best version of ourselves. Coaches love that shit. Become the best version of yourself. Now, as a coach myself and mentor to those who deal with anxiety, deal with depression, just need someone to talk to, those words make me cringe. The best version of yourself. What does that mean? That there's only one best version of you? That wh where is he or she? And to access that best version of you, what about all of those other versions? Should they be swept away under the rug? Are they no longer relevant? We need to let them go. We need to say they're not good enough. And we only need to attain and master and chase this best version. You see where I'm going with that? Probably inspired by a previous episode of uh, self-help books and, and what these other coaches really want us to reach, this, this peak of complete bliss of existence i'm not about that i'm about the podcast of being human and fear my friends is all human we know that from our evolutionary history fear has kept us alive fear means that there's danger there last time i went to the bushes for berries i saw this lion and it showed me its big sharp white teeth and it pounced on me and it ripped off my pinky finger and a week later i'm hungry but i'm not going back to the berry bush because that lion might still be there pretty good pretty good logic pretty good emotional center and uh, alarm system in our bodies and physiology to say if you got attacked in the berry bush don't go back to the berry bush fear has kept us alive man and it's fear that actually drives us to do more and to be better. So you can think of it this way. Is the fear of being, let's say, alone at age 50 and you've never been married, never had kids, never been in a relationship. Is Do you fear that more than fear being in a relationship and feeling that mundane routine of knowing and being with the same person over and over you get to compare these fears what's the worst case scenario so fear can propel us into making change because you know what you know what i don't want to be that would that would kill me if i was still working at the dollar store at age 42 as a cashier nothing against that i'm just saying that could be someone's you know, they really don't want to be in that position in 10 years time. Fear of that scenario propels them to go back to school, to try a new job, to apply for manager, whatever it is, to make sure that that future within them, that thought completely dies. That they've seen themselves as a man or as a cashier at age 42 and they say, wow, that scares the shit out of me. So I'm going to make change now. So fear in that sense if used 
is a great thing. It helps us change. It brings us to like, it creates new ideas and infinite futures that we can, we can go chase and we can aspire to, um, to do these different things. That's totally cool, man. Like fear can be used as a tool that way, but that's probably not what we're talking about here. We're talking about fear as in what I mentioned at the beginning of the fear of being nobody, fear of being lonely, fear of messing up, the fear that no matter how hard I try, I still won't be good enough. That's a fear, the fear that will fail. The fear that, what if I put in all this work, right? What if I do everything? What if I put it all in, put everything on the line, and it just blows up in my face? So the ultimate answer to that would be, well, then why even try? And then a lot of us don't try. We play it super, super, super doobity dipper safe, like too safe. So where's the balance in that, and where is this tool that I like to share with you. And I share this with clients a lot and people that I work with. Um, and they find it really useful. And I've found it useful in my life as well. And a lot can be attained through meditation, everyone, and sitting and practicing these things. But I'll give you a tool where you don't really need to meditate on it. It doesn't take long to do. It's a perspective. And then you can try it right now uh, when you go about your day, when you turn off my voice on your phone. So... Let's say, here, here, a classic example is if, if you have a fear of driving. Psychologists do this all the time. If you have a fear of driving, right when you get in that car, your whole body seizes up. We know this. It's muscle memory. The fascia above the muscle has memory. And that's something that I've dealt with a lot um, and trying to get, you know, create these new memories through osteopathy and, and, and functional work that way for my body. So in driving, right when you put those two hands on the wheel, your body remembers and your muscles remember, this is a bad thing. This is a dangerous thing that you're doing right now. Cause remember what happened last time? The line was there when you went for the berries. Remember what happened last time? When your hands were like this on the wheel, something bad happened. Why are you doing this again? And we listen to those voices and we pay attention to our physiology. That's the fear that's speaking. That's the reptilian brain that's speaking, yeah? This was dangerous before. Don't do it again. What are you thinking? You're going to get us hurt again. Now that voice of fear that comes up doesn't take into account all the work that you've done since the accident or since that bad thing happened. Mm -mm -mm. Of course not. No, it looks at the worst case scenario right away and goes back to the source of the pain. So what do we do with that fear, everyone? What do we do with that fear? The, that classic acronym is false evidence appearing real. I remember uh, someone told me that to help me with fear. Scott, it's just false evidence appearing real. That's what fear means. I'm like, okay, great. Thanks for the acronym, asshole. That's not helping. <laughs> That doesn't help, man. But here's something that helped me. So you're in the car. What do you do with your fear? Now, why don't we pretend that fear is actually a thing? Let's pretend. It's real in our minds. It's real in our physiology. Let's create an object out of it, everyone. So what would you like your fear to be? Make it a freaking gremlin, something gross. Maybe something round, something fuzzy, something cute, whatever you see that fear. Now, a lot of the times during focusing, a lot of the time that fear is something small. Because the fear inside of us wants to protect and it's scared. Yeah? Maybe a younger version of you that wants to protect, that's intimidated, that wants comfort and support, and the world's scary out there. I'm too small to deal with this. So how do you picture your fear? What object would you give it, or maybe a younger version of you, whatever it is? And you can close your eyes right now, and you can picture it if you'd like. Okay? 
whatever it is. And where do you feel it in your body? Where do you feel that fear in your body? Sometimes it's in our tummies. Sometimes, you know, driving is in my neck, right? My traps and suboccipital muscles. Where do you feel your fear? So let's go back to, let's go to the car now. And you can be wherever you are, but let, for the sake of the example, in the car, take that object of fear and place it on the passenger seat. Literally, take your hands. If it was from my neck, look at me in the video if you're watching. I'm taking my hands, I'm taking this object of fear out of my neck, and I'm placing it in the passenger side seat. And you know what else I'm doing? I'm taking the seat belt and I'm clicking it. I'm strapping in my fear to be beside me, to be part of me, but not identifying with it in that moment. And you're creating space with fear because we, when we identify with an emotion, it becomes us, it is us, and we can't see out of the fog of this emotion. We're lost. We can't see the sun anymore. By doing that physically and by creating an image of that fear, you're creating distance. You're creating space for yourself. And you're seeing it for what it is. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. It's a protective barrier. It's trying to protect you. Let it protect you from a distance. So in the car, I'm taking it. I'm picturing a fuzzy ball right now. I'm picturing a fuzzy ball coming off of my neck, popping it on the passenger side and click, click. And say, okay, fear, I know you're worried about me. I know last time we did this, you know, it didn't go too well, but it's time for me to give it a shot. It's time for me to give it another go. So you can stay right there. You can drive on with me, but just sit there and just chill for a bit. I got some driving to do. And you put your hands on the wheel and you go about your business. Go to places with fear. It's not about overcoming fear. It's about living despite of fear, living with fear, moving through fear, putting fear beside us and keep moving. So regardless of the car example, let's say you're going out into a, to a party, right? You're going to a party and this is post-pandemic stuff and maybe it's your first party you're going to right and there's going to be 20 people 30 people you're going to a club it's going to be 180 people okay and what do you where do you want to put your fear there the fear is maybe in the chest cavity solar plexus is tight huh so let's take it imagine what it is what does it feel like is the fear i don't know is, is the fear a part of you that needs to please other people and you fear that you won't be able to meet their expectations? Hmm. Is it fear that you need to be on while you're at the club the whole time and make sure that you have the best time ever because you're going to the club and it's got to be good. It's like New Year's Eve. You, you build it up in your mind and you have to meet all these expectations. So is it the fear of like disappointment and things not going perfectly? And what's that object like? And what do you want to do with it? Before you get to the club, maybe you put it right outside the door. Maybe with your buddies and you're, you know, they can look at you all they want, but do a little, do a little thing. Do a little motion of putting this object down. Pretend to tie your shoelaces, right? And, and put the object down right beside your shoe. This imaginary object of whatever your fear looks like and say, okay, you're, I fear you're outside the club right now. You're going to chill there for a bit. I'm going to go dance and do what I got to do to have a good time. And then I'll come back and get you and see how you're doing. Bring it into the club with you. Put it in your back pocket. Put it somewhere gross like in the club bathrooms, right? Throw it in the urinal and be like, all right, I'm going to piss on you, fear. Have a good time. Drink up. I'll be back. I'm going to go up for a dance. You know, there's so many different ways you can do this. And it's not the way if 
it's your way. It's whatever works for you, my friends. So if this seems like it would be useful, even not by hearing my voice, but do it for yourself. I think it's a pretty awesome trick and, and I, I use it myself. Um, so remember, to really locate where this fear and emotion is in your body, sorry, uh, it's a phone message. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> to really locate where it is in your body, like cl feel free to close your eyes. Close your eyes on it. Just locate it. Where is it? And do you feel it anywhere? Maybe you don't feel anything. That's okay too. Maybe you feel it all over in every part of your body. Maybe it's tingling. Maybe it's sharp. Maybe it's nausea. Maybe it's dizziness. Maybe it's heat. Uh, wherever it is, whatever it is, don't judge it. And then create your object and put it to the side. Create some space, my friends. So yeah, false evidence appearing real. Sure, that's what fear is. But listen, man, appearing real. No, no, no. Fear is real. It's very real. It doesn't appear real. And the evidence, although it says it's appearing real. No, no, no. That evidence seems pretty damn true in the moment. So I, I don't like that acronym. I don't like the best version of yourself. The fear can be part of us. You don't need to throw it away. You need to give it some rest. You need to let it be on its own and you need to create some distance. And when you do that, I guarantee you, man, you'll be full of freedom. You'll free, pre, feel pretty damn good about it. So that's how I deal with fear and how I, I um, share that with other people as well. All the links in the description, my friends. Thanks a lot for joining me on this episode. I really appreciate your ears and your attentiveness and, uh, and I hope this works for you. And if you'd like to chat with me, please, all the links are in the description. If you want a one-on-one -on -one chat or if you want to join my newsletter, if you want some anxiety videos that are absolutely free to help you deal with those sensations, all links in the description. No pressure. All right. Take care.